Hello everyone, today I'll be going over my routines and procedures because this is definitely something that you should be thinking about, especially if this is your first year of teaching. This is the most important thing you will be doing the first few weeks of school, so you should really have it planned out. So I want to share some of my routines and procedures with you. I will not go into detail on mine. I'll just give you more of a checklist of things that you should be looking at. And of course, if you do want to look at my routines and procedures more in detail, you can always pause the video and read some of the things I have up. Um, this is not completed. I'll probably include a few more pictures, although this is more just for me, um, just to be able to look at this. Obviously, not going. the kids won't see this or anything. But this is very important to go over. So before I start rambling, because I can, I'm just going to give you an overview of what routines and procedures you should be thinking about when you start the new year. So number one is obviously your morning routine. So that's when the kids walk in. You need to think about what they are doing in every single morning. So where do they put their backpack, their folder, their lunchbox, their jackets, their towels, whatever they have that they need to put away, where do they put it? Then what are they going to be doing? Um, so morning work, bell ringer, whatever they're going to be doing, you have to have that set. And then also what voices can they use? So it, do they need to be completely quiet? Can they talk at what voice level? Those are some things you need to think about as well as what is something that you are going to be doing. So will you be checking attendance? Will you be collecting lunch money? Also think about those things because you also have that routine as well. Then there's turning in work. So where will they turn that work in if that's something you want them to do? Another thing is carpet. And again, this is more for elementary. But what? how should they look in the carpet? And just, just a reminder so I don't keep mentioning it, I probably will, is you need to model every single one of these and role play with the kids and really reinforce all of this, especially at the beginning of the year. And then just over throughout the year, just again, you can give some reminders. But the more you reinforce this at the beginning of the year, the better. So here's a carpet. How should they look at the carpet? Again, what should it feel like, look like, and sound like? Then there's turn and talk. Um, I won't start this right away. I'll probably start introducing this about two weeks in. Um, then there is the bathroom. So how can they let you know that they need to go to the bathroom? Um, what should they be doing in the bathroom? So make it clear that they can't be playing or any of that because they will, or they need to use voice zero. Then there's times for a whole group to use the bathroom. So if you have some times that the whole group can use the bathroom, let them know that. Also, washing hands, so how many sorts of soap can they use, how many paper towels, and then again, what voice should they use there. Drinking water, so when can they drink water, and can they have a water bottle, where can they put it. Tissues, also how can they get it, and how can they let you know that they need it. I personally use hand signals, one finger is bathroom, two is pencil, and three is tissues. The next one is hand sanitizer. So again, these are specific to me. Some of them, everyone really has to make them, but try to think about things that you need for your classroom um, and think of everything. And again, you can change this throughout the year. The next thing are baby wipes, hallway. So how should they look in the hallway? What should they be doing? Where should they be walking? Next thing is lunchtime. So when do you go out for lunch? What door do you go out through? So that's something else you need to think about. If you have more than one door, what door do they use to go to different places? Then there's classroom jobs. If you are going to have those, you need to think about the jobs you're going to have and what resp their responsibilities are. And again, model them so you can get a student to model what that job looks like. So I personally have line leader, door holder, table washers, trash helpers, and table captains. And if the job is not done responsibly, they lose the job. And I will give them a warning, but if they continue to do it, they lose that job. Then there's group work. So think about how many tables you have, how many students you have at each, what voice levels they can use in different times. So independent work, 
group work and maybe carpet time, any different time you need to think about what voice levels they can use and how are you going to show them those voice levels. So are you going to use a chart? Are you going to use the smart board? You need to think about how you will show them what voice level they need to be at. And again, model it for them. So show them what that voice level sounds like. Then there's flex groups or small groups. Again, show them um, how many groups are you going to have? How are you going to call them? And um, you need to have something to show them that you're in a small group. Like for me, I have an orange cone and that tells them that I am currently with a small group or I am assessing. That means they cannot interrupt me unless it is an emergency. So you can think of things that you can have that way they know that you that they cannot interrupt you at that time. I'm gonna get in a lesson emergency. Then there are name tags. So what are you gonna do with the name tags? What if you start playing with them? That's again, a very minor detail. Um, so you don't have to include that, but I think the more you include, the better. Um, again, so they know because if you don't tell them anything about the name tags, they will definitely play with them and tear them off and throw them and do things you would not have imagined. For me, I also include the classroom caddy, pencils, you need to think about um, how can they use the pencils, what do they do if they need a new pencil, and where are you going to keep those pencils. Next are crayons, scissors, again just supplies, glue sticks, and then expo markers. Then there's turning work in, where are they going to turn that work in. There's early finishers, so you need to think about what are the students going to do if they finish their work early? Then their centers. So how will they rotate in those centers? Where can they see what centers they're at? How should they be behaving at those centers? Um, I also included all my centers. And you have to, again, put those expectations for those centers. Personally, what I like to do is, again, I have showed them how to use the center. We've gone over it. If I have to give them, um, and if I see it consistently having a problem at that center, I will close down that center for the week. For example, if in kitchen center, the kids are continuously either biting the plastic foods or throwing them, and I see that it's a consistent problem, even though we've gone over it, I will close that center and reopen it, and then again go over why it was closed and why um, we need to work better. That way it's not closed again. Next is rest time. So what they're doing at rest time. And for my kids, they only have rest time the first half of the year. And that's why I wrote the expectations on here. What my routine would be for that. Then there's snack. So think about um, at what time they eat their snack, how much time they have, what do they need, what do they do if they need something, and what do they do when they have trash. So do they just get up and throw their trash away? Is there a specific time you want them all to throw their trash? That sort of thing. Then there's recess, so what should they be doing at recess, and what will be your call and response to call them to leave. Then there's, I wrote in writing because I am planning on doing flexible seating for writing. Um, I'm going to do the free way first and then see how that goes, and if I like it I might incorporate a few other things, but for now I'm just going to do it free, I'm not going to purchase any things. And my choice for me standing up, sitting at your seat, sitting on the floor, and laying down. And then again, if I like that, I might try um, some other things. And then the last thing is just dismissal. So how are they going to be dismissed? And what is going to be your routine for that? So that was just an overview of my routines and procedures. I hope that helped you if you are a new teacher and you're thinking about what routines you should be thinking about. And please give it a thumbs up if you like this video. Thank you for watching.